This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, 11th October. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Airlift Committee Chairman and Tourism Minister talk about benefits of a flagship hotel to Grenada. Caribbean Airlines interested in renewing MOU with this country and ILO working to eliminate hazardous child labor. Details are next. <music> of Culture presents the second annual Anti-Tech Spicewood Festival, Tuesday, October 18th to 23rd, 2011. The festival kicks off with an official launch on October 18th at the St. George's University. On Wednesday, October 19th, a book fair and exhibition will be held at the Public Library featuring Sir Paul School. On Thursday, October 20th, Ms. Verna Wilkins will be featured at a book fair at the Esplanade Mall. On Friday, October 21st, come out to Bathory Beach for Bonfire and Storytelling Night. Showcase your work on October 22nd at the Young Authors Book Fair, Exhibition, Extravaganza and Poetry Slam at the Botanical Gardens. The festival culminates with a grand concert at Fort Matthew. So be a part of this year's Spice Word Festival. Bring your word and come. October 18th to 23rd. For more information, contact the Prime Minister's Ministry on 440-2255 or 440-2265. Look out for build-up events prior to the festival. Do you really want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back, viewers. The chairman of the Grenada Airlift Committee, Michael McIntyre, says there is need for a flagship hotel in Grenada to attract the type of numbers needed to sustain the tourism industry. He says venturing into an area like this will ultimately result in greater exposure for Grenada by putting the country on the world map. Mr. McIntyre was speaking on the GI Spice Morning Program on Tuesday. I think it's very important that a flagship hotel is got for Grenada. Let's use Jamaica as a good example. You have Sandals, Butch Stewart. He has done a magnificent job for Jamaica. He's a great marketer. He's done it in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. He's done it in Antigua. Mm -hmm. He's done it in the Cake, Turks and Caicos Islands, right? He came to Grenada and looked at it, but he's a tough guy. Our conditions didn't meet his union. But if you have somebody like a Butch Stewart or a Four Seasons or a Marriott or something, they have within their own marketing organization tremendous wherewithal to pr promote the country. And that's one of the areas we are definitely failing. At. Up to now, we have not been able to attract a top-notch hotel chain to come to the island. If you had that, it would assist tremendously in putting Grenada on the map. Tourism Association member Ian W agrees that a five-star hotel will help promote Grenada on the world stage. He says the government has an important role to play in this. The government can create some sort of uh, investment fund whereby Grenadians can invest in, in putting this hotel together. And once it's under marketing, you know, a company like, like, like Sanders or maybe Hyatt Regan or one of those, you know, name brand hotels that spend lots of money marketing, then, you know, every, it can be looked at as an investment as great. I mean, we put money into Clico and where are we today? That's correct. So, uh, you know, I think that Grenadians can look at a different avenue of, you know, and the government can put a package together. Some sort of incentive, you know, you put in $100,000, you get so much percent off 
from taxes or you know something we have to be creative Meanwhile, Grenada Tourism Minister has reiterated the need for a brand name Five Star Hotel to help in the further development of the local tourism industry. The position of the Honorable Peter David is supported by tourism industry officials such as Hotelier Ian Dabrio and Michael McIntyre, Chairman of the Airlift Committee. Grenada's hotel room stock is estimated at between 1,200 and 1,500. Minister David says the number is not enough, especially with current attempts to increase airline passenger travel from Europe and North America. He says the presence of a major brand name hotel chain in Grenada will serve the tourism sector in at least two critical ways. It will uh, do marketing itself. We have limited resources for marketing, but you look on the TV. A lot of these major chains, they market themselves. Secondly, it will provide room stock so that we can increase the amount of, of airlines coming in. The airlines are not going to come in if the people have nowhere to stay. So that is why I am of the view, and I think the industry uh, agrees with me on this and the government uh, agrees with me that we need to attract a major internationally well-known five-star hotel to our country and that is why we've been working with China Exim, we've been speaking to other developers and I as Minister of Tourism will certainly, will certainly uh, be working uh, over the next couple of weeks and months to ensure that that comes to fruition. Caribbean Airlines is interested in renewing a memorandum of understanding with the Grenada government for continued air service between Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago and New York's JFK International Airport. The disclosure of the air carrier's interest was made Tuesday by Tourism and Civil Aviation Minister Peter David. Under the previous MOU, the Grenada government accepted responsibility to support the service should the airline not find the operation profitable. Details from Betty and Lazarus. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, Peter David, says government will be meeting with the executive of Caribbean Airlines in the not-too-distant future to discuss the way forward, having been quite satisfied with the service the air carrier provided over the past year. The regional carrier offers two weekly flights from Grenada to JFK on Wednesdays and Saturdays and two daily flights from Grenada to Port of Spain during the rest of the week. The carrier also came to Grenada's assistance for the carnival season by adding two more flights out of Port of Spain to its weekly schedule. Minister David says Caribbean Airlines operation has not been a burden for the government of Grenada. Looking at the performance of Caribbean Airways over the last year, we are delighted that it has cost the government zero because we have an arrangement. If they do not perform well, if people do not fly, then government has to pay. And we are quite excited about the fact that in some months, it showed 95% capacity coming in from New York. So, so we are excited that over the next couple of days, the Grenada government and the Caribbean Airways in Trinidad and Tobago will be signing, renewing the Memorandum of Understanding to ensure that flights continue between Grenada and Trinidad, between Grenada and New York. Increased LF capacity into Grenada as well as the development of Grenada's tourism product have been a priority for government. Prime Minister Tillman Thomas has listed tourism as one of the five economic pillars that government intends to use to propel the economy. Minister David added that Grenada will be very happy to continue its relation with Caribbean Airlines. Betty and Lazarus, Public Relations Officer, Ministry of Tourism. The International Labour Organization is assisting its Caribbean partners to achieve the 2016 mandate of eliminating all forms of hazardous child labour. A team from the ILO began a three-day workshop on Tuesday at the Grenada Grand Beach Resort with participants from across the region. Details from Abigail McIntyre. As it stands now, there are no clear international list of what can be referred to as hazardous child labour, but the aim of the workshop is to get countries to understand what is bad for children's health, safety and morals and create their own list. This will be dependent on the conditions and practices of the individual countries. The ILO is providing technical support in this regard through the expertise of its senior legal officer with the International Programme on Elimination of Child Labour, Yoshi Noguchi. Child labour has been a problem and then especially if it's so bad for safety, health and morals of children, it means they are at risk of falling sick or getting injured or even killed. So it's really important to have immediate action against these uh, particular forms. That's why we call uh, the worst forms of child labour and this has been a new convention that was adopted in 99 and 
all the countries in the Caribbean have already ratified, so they are committed, and that's why we are giving technical support to take steps in this uh, action. Ms. Noguchi says it's important that countries stick to the organization's mandate of eliminating all forms of hazardous child labor by the year 2016. 2016 was a very ambitious goal, yes indeed. It was uh, suggested in 2006 when we released the second time uh, uh, the global estimate that showed quite a good decrease from the previous time. During the four years, it uh, decreased about 10%. And we thought, well, at this rate, then let's aim for elimination by 2016, which was 10 years from that, that epoch. But now, after the five years already gone, and then also the economic crisis and everything, it's not that easy anymore. And then we see the um, decrease of child labor is somehow slowing down. Yes, that's a concern. At the end of the workshop, it is hoped that participants begin the process of tripartite consultations, workers, employers and government, to establish their list of what can be considered as the worst forms of child labor. It's very important for each country to determine what's dangerous and therefore prohibited for under 18. Or otherwise, children can start working at the age of 15 or 16. Well, some countries have it 14, but then from that age, it's okay to work, but not in whatever conditions. That's why we want to fix this clear line of what's permissible and what is not. What we want them to think is what's the steps in their country to have these lists of what is prohibited? Because it's been reported to the ILO and also mentioned by the ILO's body, uh, experts committee that is monitoring this international uh, standards have been pointing out that in these Caribbean countries there has been a bit um, insufficient uh, regulations about this subject. So they need to take steps to really discuss this in the country and fix it properly in the regulations. The workshop ends on Thursday 13. Abigail McIntyre reporting for the GIS NewsHour. The Organization of American States, OAS, is providing ICT support to the Ministry of Finance under the Caribbean Sustainable Energy Program. The program, which is implemented by the OAS Department of Sustainable Development, seeks to address market conditions for the development and use of renewable energy in Grenada and a number of other Caribbean OAS members. Government recently completed its national energy policy, which sets out the overall plan regarding the exploration for and the exploitation of the country's hydrocarbon potential. The policy, which was developed with assistance from the OES, is currently being published also with assistance from the organization. During a brief presentation on Tuesday, Finance Minister Nazim Burke commended the organization for the role it is playing in the development of Grenada's energy sector. On this occasion, it is providing um, ICT support, um, information communication technology support to the Department of Energy in the form of a notebook, a computer, uh, a printer, together with some accessories including a toner, scanner, antivirus programming, a briefcase for uh, the notebook, um, and an entire package costing in excess of $7,000. This is um, a, a very significant development and we want to take this opportunity to say that we truly appreciate um, this ex uh, gift. We believe that it will go a long way to assist the department in the maintenance of its, in the fulfillment of its commitment to improve the capacity of the department to provide better services as they relate to energy development. This, as was mentioned by Mr. Craig, is part and parcel of the uh, Caribbean Sustainable Energy Program, something that again has the blessing and direct financial support and sponsorship of the Organization of American States. Climate change, rising sea levels and protection of natural resources, these are some of the pivotal issues that environment ministers from Grenada and the rest of the OECS will examine when they meet here from Wednesday. They'll be attending the 19th meeting of the OECS Technical Advisory Committee, the TAC, 
on Environment and Sustainable Development on Wednesday and the 15th meeting of the OECS Ministerial Environment Policy Committee on Thursday. The two-day meeting will be held in collaboration with the OECS Environment and Sustainable Development Unit. Environmental officials who comprise the TAC will spend the first day outlining the work program and budget for the upcoming year. They'll also make recommendations for approval by OECS Environment Ministers. The meeting will be held at the Grenadian Birex Resort. We take a break. We'll be right back. I did it. I did it. Come and look at what I've done. I read a book when someone wrote it long ago for me to read. How did he know that this was the book I take from the shelf, lie on the floor and read by myself? I really read it, just like that, word for word, from first to last. Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good book Hats off to the men in boots. They've heard your cries for fresh, sweet, homegrown bananas. Just like the good old days. So get yours today for a healthier you. Loaded with goodness. Fresh, homegrown bananas. Available on sidewalks, supermarkets, shops, and at the nation's number one retailer of fresh, top quality local fruits and vegetables, the Marketing and National Importing Board. Welcome home, local bananas. And remember, hats off to the men in boots, our nation's farmers. Continuing the news, Citizens Paint will unveil some of its new products and services in a women-only seminar and product exposition on Wednesday. The event will be held at the Public Workers' Union building, with the first session starting at 9 in the morning and the second from 1 in the afternoon. The idea is to show women how to use the paint, mix and match and blend colors. It is the first time the company is organizing an exercise of this nature. We have... Um, we're inviting people to come and have a personal sit down with our color consultant who would give you advice on whatever issues you may have home that you want to decor, your internal decor, discuss general issues about changing your colors and how you can do that and blend and match these colors. So we have personal um, sit downs with our color consultant between 1 and 4.35. And then after that we do the, the, the evening session for the people who couldn't come because they were at work. We do an evening session and um, invite ladies there to come and go through the products, go through the different, you know, in paint now really there's so many things you can do. Mix, match, and really excite the ladies. As a matter of fact, we're doing some panels, you know, you'll walk into the place and you'll walk on a finish that um, is going to show you how you can um, actually have a tile finish without laying a tile. How to get a terrazzo finish without actually doing terrazzo. You paint it on. So there's so much wonderful things now happening in the world of paint. That's Christopher Diali of Sissons Paints. During Wednesday's seminars, Sissons will introduce some of its new products. Explain to them how you can use a metallic paint, for example, how you can use, um, you know, the, the, the different types of finishes we have. We have a thing called four finish. Four finish. Four finishes is where you do what you call ragging and plastic bagging and sponging and so on on your wall to give different type of effects. We have things called combing and striping, a lot of different types of finishes that give you different feels. So um, you may have a bathroom that you find is dreary and you want to lift the spirit of the bathroom or make it more welcoming when you go there to have your private moments. We could do things that could, you know, give you that kind of lift. As well as um, there's a new product we have on the market called um, Paint Sensation. Right, Paint Sensation. Yeah, what it does <laughs> is, is it adds um, scent to the paint of a particular lime, you know, a lime smell or 
And when you paint that on your wall, it lasts for about six to nine months, depending on the place. So every time you walk into your bathroom, for example, instead of you having to use a, a deodorant or mm -hmm. fragrant, it's in the paint. <laughs> Mr. Diali says he looks forward to the event, which can be described as a pre-Christmas marketing strategy. We're really excited really, that this is going to be um, something different, as I said, and um, our, our ladies are going to really experience, have an experience they will never forget, because we're going to introduce them to a number of new products and um, new ways of doing things. We have countertop products where you can do your countertop now in a particular paint finish, and it comes out just as one of these hard top counters. So, you know, there's, there's so many things now, you know, that is available and is, I think we need to just expose them and let them know what it is. And of course, Sissons continues to back it with its excellent quality and service. Two members of the Toastmasters Club will represent Grenada at a regional challenge in Venezuela this weekend. Lucille Sylvester and Jacqueline Alexis will leave the island for the Spanish country to compete in a District 81 speech contest on Saturday. Toastmasters International is a non-profit organization that focuses on developing the oral communication and leadership skills of its members. On Tuesday, the local club held a media briefing to introduce the local contestants to the public. Area governor of the club, Donet Kalist, says she expects a good performance from the participants. Toastmaster Lucille and Jackie, we are confident you are going to give your very best and represent our area well. We admire your dedication, devotion, determination and sacrifice to fulfill your dreams, your clubs and Area 21. You have our full support. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our corporate citizens, Grenada Lottery Authority, George F. Huggins Grenada Limited, Beacon Insurance Company, Republic Bank Grenada Limited, AGD Designs, Courts Grenada Limited, Agostini Insurance Brokerage Grenada Limited. These companies have acknowledged the benefits which Toastmasters can bring to the companies and the country. Without your support, our club and area contestants will not have been possible. Credit manager at Republic Bank Anthony Clark says he's impressed with the program of the Toastmasters Club and encourages more to be a part of it. We are quite we are happy with the club and what it has done for our staff. It is a very good opportunity for them to hone their presentation skills, not just for people who is part of their job, but in general, you know, at some point in our life, we probably have to stand up in front of people and make presentations and do speeches. So I think it is very good. It uh, allows them to build that sort of self-confidence that is not only good for themselves and pro probably in their personal lives as well, but it's also good for the companies. So that's why we were pleased to be part sponsors of this program. And I'm sure as I speak on behalf of the other sponsors, it was a good investment. Battling the scourge of rising crime and violence and some of the world's highest murder rates, Caribbean nations are appealing to the United Nations for help. They are urging the world body to help them stem the unrelenting flow of guns and ammunition to the region. From the Bahamas, Jamaica and St. Kitts Nevis, countries with some of the world's highest homicide rates, Trinidad and Tobago, which already has a state of emergency in place because of crime, and Antigua to Barbados and St. Lucia. The plea to the world body is essentially the same. Act quickly to pass an effective global small arms treaty that would make it much more difficult for rich North American and European countries to export deadly weapons that are fueling crime. Trinidad and Tobago, the only country in the Caribbean with a state of emergency to fight crime, describes as ambitious a UN plan to hold a conference next July to negotiate a small arms treaty. Barbados' Prime Minister Frondel Stewart has thrown his support behind the long-mooted regional ferry service and on Monday he commended the government of Trinidad and Tobago for recently taking the bull by the horns and giving a firm commitment to getting the service operational as soon as possible. Stewart says a final report on the CARICOM study of the feasibility of establishing a fast ferry service in the Southern Caribbean had concluded that the market demand for the proposed service needed to be tested and proven on the high-density traffic routes. The report had recommended a six-month pilot project be implemented in order to test that demand 
and Stewart believes the study was a step in the right direction and important confirmation that such a venture could be profitable when the potential cargo and passenger revenues were taken into consideration. That's news. Sports is next. For Grenada, Carrier Coon, and Pity Martinique, get on your marks, set, bingo! On Saturday, Saturday, October 29, 2K11, race to the National Cricket Stadium to experience the bingo of all bingo! In lane one, sponsored in part by Huggins Automotive, is a brand new 2011 Hyundai Tucson, coupled with an all-inclusive automotive kit, compliments SP's International. In lane two, part sponsored by Digicel, are Caribbean cruise tickets for two with five hundred dollars spending money. In lane three, compliments Digicel are two BlackBerry smartphones. And in lane four, twenty thousand dollars in hot cash. Yeah. Compliments the NLA in collaboration with Clark's Court and Carib. A total of one one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars in prizes at the starting blocks. And so many ways to win big. big, big, big. Cruise phones, cash, and control. Entertainment from Grenada's top artists and much more. Brought to you by the National Lotteries Authority. Tickets are only $50. So everybody tell somebody and race on out to the National Cricket Stadium on Saturday, 29th October. October. Must be 18 or older to participate. Remember, when you play bingo with the NLA, you are supporting sports, culture, and nation building initiatives. The secondary school's netball is here again. It's the 2011 D Sports. Shop Intersecondary Schools Netball Competition beginning Thursday, October 13, 2011. Grenville Secondary will be defending the B title and the A teams will be seeking to shoot out the champ Anglican High School. The opening ceremony will be at the Tanti Netball Complex Thursday, October 13, 1 30 p.m. Come out and support your favorite teams as they shoot to the basket. It's going to be fantastic, thrilling, gripping, absorbing, exciting, great, competitive, aggressive netball. Oh, great shot! West Indies lose a close 2020 encounter against Bangladesh. National youth cricketer Roland Cato was the most outstanding player in the WICB Sanders Foundation High Performance Camp held last month in St. Lucia. Young athletes been urged to use Kirani James as their inspiration, and an exciting 2011 D Sports Shop Secondary School netball season in the making. These and more are in this edition of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Bowling off with cricket, West Indies were on the losing end of a close and exciting 2020 encounter against Bangladesh at the Cherry Banga Stadium on Tuesday morning. It came down to the home team needing 20 runs of the last two balls, but newcomer Carlos Rapid conceded 14 runs of the penultimate over to give the host the ascendancy. Ravi Rampal, who had bowled at the final over, kept it to four runs from two balls. But the Bangladesh captain, Ms. Fahou Rahim, clubbed the penultimate ball over the mid on boundary for a sensational six to win the game for his team. Rahim scored an unbeaten 41 to take his team to 135 for seven. West Indies batted first and scored 133 for six. Marlon Samuels had a pretty good game, top scoring with 56 and grabbing two for 14 from his four overs. The win was the first for, the, for Bangladesh over the West Indies at home in 13 games. West Indies must now pick themselves up and come stronger in the first of the three match one day series starting on October the 13th. News reaching was Paul's desk indicated that national youth cricket captain Roland Cato was the most outstanding player at the recent WICB Sandals Foundation High Performance Camp in Castries, St. Lucia, 
August 13 to the 27th. Cater won the award for two weeks, the top award after two weeks of intense training under the supervision of WICB coaches. Other prize winners included Ghanese pair of uh, Tagnarine Chandapal, son of West Indies player Shinaran Chandapal, who was the best batsman, and our spinner Shiraz Ramcharan, the best bowler. Another Grenadian, Craig Phillip, was named the most outstanding fast bowler. Three other Grenadians also participated in the camp. Batsman Melvin Gordon, spinner Al Rounder, or spinning Al Rounder, that should be Daron Hippolyte, and next spinner Daryl Cyrus. The five national players represented the Wooden Islands in the 2011 West Indies Under-15 competition held earlier in the year in Trinidad and Tobago. The best under-16 players from Guyana, TNT, and the Wooden Islands participated in the camp in St. Lucia, while a similar camp was held simultaneously in Antigua for players from Barbados, the Leeward Islands, and Jamaica. Still with uh, youth cricket, several national youth players will be on show this weekend at the Woburn Plain Field, where the Grenada Cricket Association Grassroots Under 17 Cricket Festival takes place. National senior and Rhode Island's uh, under 19 player, Kian George, will skipper a combined cluster team that engages a team consisting of players from St. Andrew and St. Patrick. Roland Cater is also in the squad that's made up of players from St. George's and St. David's. Rhode uh, Island's youth players, spinner Darren Hippolyte and fast bowler Craig Phillip, Craig Phillip are spearheading the St. Andrew's St. Patrick's combination, or the action at the Woburn Plain Field on Saturday. In athletics, president of the Grenada Athletic Association, GAA, Aaron Moses, urges young artists to use Kirani James as their inspiration. Moses reminds youngsters that hard work and dedication, which have been the hallmarks of Kirani's success, pay dividends. The, the athletic official says that, that greatness can come from humble beginnings. Despite your circumstances, despite limited resources, despite wherever you come from, you can rise to the top. You can rise to the summit. However, you can only do that if you're very clear about your goals, if you're sufficiently committed, if you're disciplined, if you can display the determination and tenacity to succeed as Kirani has done. Moses wants to see more world champions from the Spice Isle emerge and calls an artist to follow in the footsteps of the world 400 meters champion. If you adopt those characteristics, if you emulate Kirani's performance, if you emulate his lifestyle, if you emulate his level of discipline, where he diligently came to this field and practiced almost every day, you too can achieve your objectives and rise to higher heights. And I think you should look at Kirani as a source of inspiration. Not only a source of inspiration for you young people, but a source of inspiration for all Grenadians. Vice President of the Grenada Athletic Association, Aaron Moses. Meanwhile, six artists will represent Grenada at the Pan American Games starting this weekend in Guadalajara, Mexico. The Spice Hall seeks glory in three disciplines, athletics, swimming, and taekwondo. Alison George, Kanika Beckles, Karen Toussaint, and Jewel Redhead compete in the track and field for Grenada, while Issa Simpson, who is based in Florida, is the swimmer, and Andrea St. Bernard participates in the taekwondo competition. George will compete in the 200 meters, Beckles in the 400 meters, to see in the men's 400 meters, and Redhead the men's 200 meter events. Simpson, who attends Nova Southeastern University in South Florida, will compete in the 50 meters freestyle event. Team officials are Chief of Mission Abel Patrick, swimming coach Natalie Ridges Sahira, Master Paul Beard, and athletic coach. Albert Joseph. Organizers are expecting a keen and exciting uh, 2011 D Sports Shop Secondary School Netball season. It opens uh, Thursday, October the 13th 
at the Tanti Netball Complex with 19 schools participating. Grand Secondary are defending the A Division title, while Anakin High School are the B Division Queens. Reports indicate that the build-up is pretty encouraging. Anakin High is the defending champion in the B Division. Mm -hmm. So we looking at the champion um, being able to put on a good show in this year. And we have the Grenville Secondary, the champion in the A Division. And like Anglican High, we are looking for them to put on a good show. McDonald College placed second in the, in the A and the B Division last year. So for that too, we are looking to see if McDonald College would be able to dethrone anybody or if they're going to settle for that second position. And um, we have Wesley College. Wesley College has done well last year. And so St. Rose Secondary, even Happy Hill Secondary have done, they have done really well. So this year, and what I realized even from um, the ending of the, the last school year, that some of the schools started to train earlier. Mm -hmm. So then we know with that hard work that the coaches have put into, well, we have to look at the, as the tournament progresses to see whether the hard work would really pay off. But I'm trusting that it would. Netball official in the Department of Sports, Kathy and Gabriel. Games have been played at several venues across the country. We have Tantin. Um, we're looking at um, Queen's Park, Caricou. We have um, St. Rose Secondary School Court. We're um, looking at the possibility of having some games on the St. John's RC School Court mm -hmm. as well. We have the McDonald College School Court. We have the River Sally um, Courts. We have the Victoria, the Court in Sass. We have um, Victoria Park in Grenville. We have Victoria in St. Mark's. Okay. We have some games scheduled for there. And also Lassages. We mm -hmm. have some games scheduled for Lassages. Oh, and also we, we would look at having some games in Pearls. Netball official Katy and Gabriel. And finally, news of football. Wins today for Happy Hill Secondary, St. Joseph Convent, St. George's, and Green SMD Adventists in the girls' division of the Republic Bank Red right Start uh, Youth Football Tournament played off today, as I said. Uh, Happy Hill Secondary beat Anakin High School two goals to one in a close encounter at the Royal St. John playing field in Tantine. Grenada Seventh-day Adventists overwhelmed St. Joseph's Convent Grenville six goals to nil at River Sally, and St. Joseph's Convent St. George's uh, whipped Wesley College nine goals to nil at the Queen's Park. Tomorrow, the attention shift to the Senior Boys Division, where seven games are scheduled. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. <laughs> Students of the Grenada Seven Day Adventist Comprehensive School. Do you know what to do before a hurricane? Well, let me share a few tips with you. Check to be certain that your emergency equipment is in good working condition. Store water, food, and essential supplies. Obtain and store materials to protect your home. Have enough supplies to last at least two weeks. Review your insurance policy to ensure it provides adequate coverage. And remember, a disaster can happen anytime, anywhere, so be prepared. Hi, I am Kim DeGale, a student of the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Do you know that the hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th? Hurricanes are known for their destructive winds, storm surges, and heavy rainfall, which may cause flooding. Therefore, it is important to keep all drains and streams clean from debris at all times. Prepare your home and all supplies well in advance. Protect your loved ones before, during, and after the hurricane. Assist your family, neighbors, and community. Let us ensure that Grenada is a safe place before, 
during and after the hurricane. Thank you, Trevor. Recapping the main points, Chairman of the Airlift Committee, Michael McIntyre, and Tourism Minister Peter David say there is need for a brand name Five Star Hotel to help in the further development of the local tourism industry. Caribbean Airlines interested in renewing its Memorandum of Understanding with Grenada and ILO working to eliminate hazardous child labor. A three-day workshop began here on Tuesday. It's taking place at the Grand Beach Resort. It runs until Thursday. That is DGIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. watching the Government Information Service Channels 12 and 22.